Anything yet? I should come up now then. Tell me if you, tell me if you hear my voice. Huh? Huh? You should be hearing my voice now. I've gone live. We're just testing, yes. Yeah. I, did <laughs> I did that ever since. Only know you get that? We we hearing anything though? Yeah. You hear me speaking now? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that now. I think I got the, I think I, I think I found the, um, I found the problem was happening with the, with the feed, with the, um, the song. So I know I am live and I know you are hearing me. I'm not saying anything out the way. I it was just testing equipment because of a problem I had. So I think I have it covered now and welcome to those of you who are already on board. I'll be started in a few minutes, but I came on this early because I wanted to make sure we don't have any hiccups or problems. So stay tuned, just stay right there and enjoy. Uh huh. He's he's here. The man himself is here. The man himself is here. Hello, my brother. The great man. Can you the hear me? Apostle, the great apostle in Canada. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Uh, a very, a very warm and precious good night to you, man. Uh, thank you, welcome sir. To, welcome to the Zoom live stream here in Barbados and across across the world, actually. Amen. Yeah, I want to, to welcome you on. So glad I could be a part of your broadcast tonight, Dr. Dave. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm so glad to have you, my friend. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I, I give God thanks for you. I'm thinking I need to switch off uh, one of my... Yeah, switch off one of your mics so you won't feed back. There we go. Yesterday, I had a feedback problem, a real serious feedback problem, man. 
So okay. I, came on early, I came on early tonight to make sure that I don't have that problem. And I found it. I found the problem. So eliminate the echoing now. I think we are clear. So yeah, how, how's it sound on your side? Yes, I, I, it's, it's settled on my side now. Oh, no. And then you turn off. When you turn off yours, just now it made it better. Yeah, so you're hearing me. You're hearing me clearly now, right? Clearly, yeah. I think very good. Up. So we on. We we we're set. I was speaking up from my phone, I think. Yeah, correct. Well, good night to you and good night to all our friends. Good night, yeah. Cheryl Moore, my dear beloved sister, all the way out there in Florida. Bless you. Thanks for. Tuning in, Orlando, Sherilyn, Durant, my sister, Janet, and Margaret Yearwood, and I have so many of you on already. And uh, we haven't officially started yet. I came on early. <laughs> <laughs> I came on early to get them to make sure that we would not have any problems tonight with echoing. And um, Apostle Noel came on early as well out there in Saskatoon. Well, right now in Saskatoon, it's bright, right? Because over here in Barbados, it's already near half past near half past seven, about 25 minutes past seven. And we start normally at 7.30. So uh, All right. we're early and it's quite dark here. It's dark, but I know oh. in Saskatoon now it's light, huh? Yeah, so, sun goes down here about nine, 10 o'clock. Because you, you have, you're entering into your summer. Well, we still in spring, yeah. But by summer, go down about eleven thirty. You been here, yeah, you know. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> I, I have seen those those long those long evenings. I call them long evenings because exactly. those evenings were going into nights. <laughs> exactly. We up at late at night. Yeah, digging it's it's still yes. early because the sun is still out. Midtime, it's okay, eleven thirty p.m. I got it covered. Okay, great. Thank you for your advice. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> yes, um, we 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 uh, we cannot go by looking at the sun when it's summer over there in Canada. <laughs> if you no. look at the sunlight, you will say, "Oh man, it's four o'clock <clears throat> in the afternoon, or it's five o'clock in the evening." Right. Well, in fact, it's about nine o'clock in the night. <laughs> but that's that, that's in the summer. Come on, the true. end of spring into summer. All yeah. right, so the weather is really different. You've also been here in the winter, and you know it, it's dark at eight o'clock in the morning, and uh, still dark uh, four o'clock in the afternoon. It starts getting dark. Yes, yes, I've been there at that time of the year as well. Yeah. And I was really surprised. Well, we <laughs> who are in the Caribbean, we are accustomed to sun in the morning, let's say around 5.30, quarter to 6, 6 o'clock, the rising sun, right? We're accustomed to that every yeah, yeah. day, every day, three, six to five and a quarter days of the year. One season. That's because we are. <laughs> that's because we are near the equator, huh? and in the evening we can expect the sun to go down around um, five thirty, quarter to six, six o'clock. Depends on the time of the year it is. Yeah. We'll go down later. So when you go to North America or Europe, you know, and you 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 you, for example, you're up there in the summer for the first time, and you don't know. Then four o'clock in the afternoon, you expecting, okay, just now, I'm going to see the sun go down, <laughs> and just now it will be dark. When you see six o'clock come, seven o'clock come, and the place still bright, and the sun still up in the air, you're shocked. But exactly. that was my experience when I was young, and I got there for the first time. It was my experience. I was just surprised that, hey, yeah. I look on my watch, I wonder if my watch was wrong. <laughs> and you know, a young boy, then you didn't, you, you wasn't prepared for that transition. Yeah, for my sure. watch was right, and nine o'clock in the night, and the sun was still up. <laughs> Amen. Quite different, quite different. But we are thankful to God for 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 this time together. Absolutely. And um, I I know that the brethren will be happy to know that you are you are you are here, and you'll be with us. Um, for tonight, I'm looking forward for God to really move, for God to really speak, for God to minister to, to the many um, who are listening in. And I trust that hearts will be so touched 
and minister mm -hmm. to because at the end of it, we want to pray for people, pray for their healing, pray for their release, pray for those who have the call of God upon their lives. Because Wednesday night, I was sharing on the call of God, you know, and um, we had a very precious time together in Amen. really relating the call. And many, I know, felt the call. As a matter of fact, one person on the, on the, on the right up on the stream said, this night is my night of testimony because Amen. God really spoke to her about the call of God, about his call on her life, you wow. know, and really brought change. And so I, I want to um, be able to touch that with you because I know that you were called all the way from South Africa, but we'll get to all of that later. But first of all, let's have a, a, a word of prayer and believe God to really meet with us in a very special way this evening. I, I greet your wife, I'm Fiona. You know, and, and your children and your grands as well. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, and I, I really thank God for, for all of you, you know, and I, 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 I honor the Father, you know, in, in uh, allowing you to be here with us this Friday night in our special session. Father, we thank you for Apostle. Thank Jerry. you, Father. <clears throat> we thank you for his wife, and we thank you for Saskatoon Full Gospel and Bridge Ministries International. Hallelujah. Lord. Pray, Lord God, you continue to move in his life and you continue yes, to release your Lord. favor upon him. We thank you, Lord God, for tonight and all that will oh, be God. said and done tonight, God. this Friday night, here at Restoration Christ. Ministries live stream. Lord, um, we, we, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for yes, your, your, your call. We thank you for the obedience that we can respond to your call from our hearts. We thank yes, you, Lord, Lord God, for this time together where we can go through, explore your word and yes. continue to build upon your call and upon the vision and upon the anointings and the gifts and all that you place within us, Lord God. We Hallelujah. thank you, Father, for what you're doing even in this season, though this is a strange season for all of us, because yes. we have never been this way before in such a, pand a pandemic. But Lord, we continue to look to you, we continue to call upon you, and we continue to focus forward, because yes. we are going forward. And Hallelujah. we thank you that with you, we know Jeez. all things are possible. Possible. So I give you the thanks, Lord God, and I give, give you the, you praise. the praise. Lord. Yes. Lord. And I give you the honor and the glory yes, for Lord. your blessings this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Very good night to you, Pastor Terry, and good night to all of you who are on stream, on the live feed, um, uh, on my Facebook, and also on Restoration Ministries. Ch um, Coral, yes, I am glad you're there. Um, you, you, you are the scribe along with Sister Maureen. I, I know that you all be doing a good job. And I, I, I thank God for Judy and Gail Veet. Uh, you are here tonight. Thank you, sis, and Suzanne Roach. Uh, all of you, I really get you from, from Curacao, Domingo from Curacao, all Amen. the way down in the Southern uh, Caribbean, Raquel Cadogan, bless all of you people. And those of you in the other parts of the Caribbean who are in tune tonight and out there in North America, uh, welcome to this session. Remain steadfast in the faith. Remain steadfast Amen. in the faith and obedient to the call. I will be speaking with a man who has remained steadfast in the faith over the years Hallelujah. and who have responded to the call of God on his life and Amen. who is here tonight. He's none other than Apostle Terry Noel. Amen. Apostle Terry Noel. And of course, his wife is Pastor Fiona. And I'm sure she is backing up in prayer tonight. Now, Amen. Apostle Terry has also, um, together with his wife, founded the Bridge Ministries International. You know, a present day apostolic network of churches and ministers passionate about God's agenda in the nations of the earth. To date, Bridge Ministries International has partners, ministers and churches across Philippines, Honduras, South and Central America, India, Mauritius, Mauritius, right? Mexico, yeah. United Kingdom, Caribbean and Zambia. And I mean, the list goes on. They're calling the name. Anyway. <laughs> so many, yeah. Apostle yes, Terry has graduated from 
the Christ of the Nation Bible Institute with associate degree in practical theology and master's um, international school of divinity with a bachelor in ministry in pastoral ministry as well and a master's of ministry in pastoral ministry. Yes, he received an honorary doctorate of practical theology from Ablaze Theological Academy, Inc. We are thankful Amen. for you, Apostle Terry, a hey, very brother. good friend of mine, one who I fellowship with, one whom I travel with all over the world. We go together. <laughs> and we're going to go more places. And we will go more places for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I really thank God for you, my brother, and bless your work there at ministry. Tell us something about the Saskatoon Full Gospel. Um, that's the one first, and then to the Bridge Ministry International. But I know you began first with the Saskatoon Full Gospel. The feeling, uh, let me start. The feeling is mutual, Apostle David. Uh, we have such a great love for you and Pastor Joy and, and the work you guys are doing in the Caribbean and across the nations. Mm -hmm. Our connection was indeed a divine connection. Yes, I believe that. Uh, yeah, witnessed by the many nations that you and I have traveled in. And we've been able to be used of the Lord uh, mightily. Uh, yes. seen tremendous transformation and change come after. Uh, we've been in different uh, parts of the world. Saying all that to say that I'm glad to be on your, on your program tonight, on your broadcast. Uh, this time is indeed, a, a, you know, a time like no other time we've had yeah and, uh, i'm excited i'm not depressed or stressed i'm, I'm excited about this time and uh, just to touch on on uh, when i came to this country of canada the lord called me to a church called uh, churchill park full gospel church yeah i remember that name. <laughs> uh, uh, way back in 1975 i came wow. and uh, I still didn't know that I was uh, to be uh, permanently. I used to travel back then, uh, you know, like you as an itinerant minister, I was traveling more, uh, carrying revival, uh, had a word from the Lord from the book of Amos, and uh, I traveled throughout the nations. But then I came to this part of Canada and the Lord really, you know, spoke to my heart. I left, I went back to Africa. And then while I was there, uh, the Lord uh, called me out away again back to Canada, still not realizing uh, that this was a, you know, a, uh, a courtship, a pursuing of the Lord uh, for me to come mm. and uh, do something here for him and take uh, mm. care of, uh, be a good steward of his uh, resources that he has here in this nation, especially in the city of Saskatoon and the province of Saskatchewan. And that was in 19, uh, 1995, uh, I think November. Then by 1996 of uh, May, 1996, uh, we traveled here and uh, so you, you honored the call. Canada, you entered Canada in 1996? Nine, I actually came in 95, spent several months here, and then my wife and uh, children, my wife had a, a scholarship to Christ for the Nations, Dallas, Texas, and they were down there. And so I left uh, Canada in 95 and went and joined them in 96 down there. We spent uh, half the year there. And then uh, I got the call from this particular congregation called the Churchill Park Full Gospel Church. Uh, I, I uh, answered the call, I came. It was supposed to be a temporary call. It was supposed to be just for the months of July and uh, August. Uh, 1996. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 year are, what year are we in, sir? <laughs> uh, <laughs> 2020, yeah. Wow. 2020. Wow. Uh, so I know, you know, it, uh, different ones have different... Uh, ideas of, of what uh, what the call of God looks like and yeah. what the call of God supposed to be like. Yeah. But I think everybody has um, uh, the call of God uh, come at them from different, you know, points of views and others yeah. have, uh, you know, the call of God, you know, in, in different ways. But, you know, I don't think we, we can, we can, 
specifically say the call of God looks like this, you know, A, B, no. C, D. No. For each of us, it's different. So yeah. yeah, 1996, I answered the call. I came here and it was, like I said, Churchill Park, full gospel at the time. Uh, once I, you know, settled in and felt uh, the complete um, confidence of the Lord and the affirmation of the Lord that this is where I've called you. This is what I have for you. Uh, here is the resources. Here is the mantle. Now run with it. And so it was uh, in that first year into my second, third year, I realized that the Lord was talking to me beyond just this small city and, uh, and the little corner of the city where I was. I approached the leadership at the time and said, you know, I feel a strong urge from the Lord that we are to expand our 10 pegs. And uh, right now we are restricting God to move just within this locality. Yeah. I believe our church is a city church. I believe that the Lord has given me the gates of the city. And so we changed the church's name to Saskatoon, full gospel, you know, representing the entire city. And of course, you know, our city, I always laugh because I come from South Africa. The city I come from is about seven and a half million people. Uh, and I came to this place and the city is only 230,000 people when I came. That was, that was, that was small, man. <laughs> And that was small. So, that was like a suburb of of uh, the you know the the place I came from. Coming from coming from a place of seven million. Yeah. So the <laughs> Lord knows, you know, and He has a sense of humor. So I came and uh, assumed the the role and the responsibility of senior minister for the uh, Saskatoon Full Gospel. That's how we 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 got us started, and you know, it was a denominational church and. You know, after a period of time, we, we felt uh, that we we had more of a global uh, and, and a world vision and uh, felt like we had outgrown where we were and uh, needed to expand. And uh, that's how the birth of Bridge Ministry International started. Uh, a lot of people don't know the city is often referred to as Bridge City. And uh, if, Saskatoon, yeah, is referred because it has bridge city, yeah, because it has several bridges that cross a particular river that runs throughout the, the city, it runs right through the, the city, it just carves apart. And the city, as it, as it you know, uh, was building itself and growing, it kept on putting bridges to allow people to go between the east and the west, and you know, of the city, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan River, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. And uh, we now have, I think, eight eight bridges across that same river, all in the city. So, okay. Uh, let me let me just share one thing of significance, uh, Apostle David. Is, is it all right if I share? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yes. About about the year nineteen hundred and ninety four, I had a vision in South Africa when I was still there helping my dad with his church plant, I had a vision of a, uh, a, a globe, a map of the world. And through this globe ran a bridge that intersected the Northern hemisphere of the globe and also intersected with the East and the West part of the globe. And I never understood what that vision was. I did write it down. I did document it. I also would, you know, at times when I was idle, I would consistently draw a picture of this bridge. And so when it came 1996, after this is 1994, 1996, I got the call to the city and uh, I was in a meeting and Reinhard Bonke was uh, preaching one service. They handed me a package. And in this uh, delegate package, on the front page was a logo of exactly what I had been drawing for over two years. Oh. Unbeknown. Oh. And so oh. coming to the city, realizing that this was the bridge you know, and the rest is oh. history. That's how we birthed. You, you were drawing that thing for for two years. 
over two you years. Had no, yet. You had no idea what it mm. was. I had no idea what the church's name was, the church that had invited me to come. I had come and I had preached for several churches throughout the city and had left. And then I came back in 90, late 95 and started another series of revival meetings throughout the churches in the, in the community. And never once did I, I realize that, hey, you know, there's this denomination that has this as their logo. Uh, but this is something I had in my files that I had always been drawing. If I had a spare moment, I would always doodle, as they call it. Uh, you know, I'd be drawing this thing until I was in that meeting where Reinhard Bonka had, uh, the late Reinhard Bonka had preached. And they gave me this delegate package and right on it. That's how I knew the, the confirmation the Lord had given me that I'm in the right place and that, I, and that it's he, he who had called me, not men. Wow. So, you know, it also helped me, it also helped me uh, feel more confident of my own self because, I mean, what, uh, it's almost 20, well, it's, it's gone 26 years since I first came here. Uh, in the early years, obviously, you you know, when you get called, you 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 have these these thoughts and you have these attacks by the enemy challenging you whether you really were called there. So you have this this inner battle and this war that's going on constantly, unseen to most naked eyes, but within yourself. And there may be some some of your viewers tonight, uh, Apostle David. I believe understand what I'm talking about right ah. now. I believe They're that. struggling right now to make yep. sense of uh, a call that God has yep. put on them. Because the devil, the enemy, loves to come after something that is authentic, something that is legit from God. So I would constantly have these, these attacks. And, uh, you know, he would create uh, environments where there was constant conflict between the leaders at the time and myself uh being a visionary and them trying yeah. to, to 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 pull me back rather than let me go but i'll just say to our viewers tonight apostle dave that are watching that are struggling with this you know uh these thoughts that well god never really called you you should go back to where you you know were comfortable uh you know I, i'll just say this the thing that kept me, and like you started your broadcast, steadfast, was uh, prayer. Uh, whenever I'd feel that attack, it would drive me to prayer. I, I had mm -hmm. outside my office, uh, because our old building used to be a school building. We had 6.2 acres of land on that, and that was all school ground. But on there, they had built a hill, uh, mm. like a man-made hill. Mm. where the kids during the winter would be able to snow, you know, ski down on their yeah. little snow toys that they had. Every morning before I'd start my day, I'd get up on that hill and I'd sit and look across uh, the landscape, the, you know, the 6.2 acres and, and really talk to the Lord. Why did you bring me here? Why did you let me leave my nation, my family, my people, you know, and bring me to this foreign nation and, uh, you know, so not you, every. You, you were having this experience in Canada. In Canada. Yeah. Exactly. I was. Wow. I was the call. You know, the call. Yeah. Because the enemy was not coming happy. from your home. Coming from your homeland in South Africa. Exactly. Standing on that hill and looking across all this land and saying, "Lord, why did you bring me here?" Because at the time, and you know, for our viewers that are watching tonight, you know, oftentimes we have this romantic idea of the call of God. You know, and uh, we try to we try to picture it from a Hollywood set of glasses. So during the time of me, you know, having the affirmation oh, clear God. for oh, me God. to know that God called me, I would have these challenges that would come my way, challenging me in the thought processes in the in the area of my mind. God didn't really call you, you know. Uh, Internally, there was this war that would go on trying to confuse me that I need to go back home and, you know, this was just a mistake. And so I know that there are people who are watching us tonight who are saying, you know what, 
I've, I've gone through that, or I'm going through that, uh, Apostle David. Uh, your, your guest speaker tonight, your brother on the, on the broadcast is speaking to me. I know there are people watching me tonight that, that understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You, you know, Apostle Dave, once, once the enemy realized he couldn't, he couldn't, yes. he couldn't defeat me internally mm -hmm. through, through the thought processes or to try to harm my heart and cause me to become dissuaded, despondent, you know, discouraged. You know, the attack now went outward now. It became very overt. I'd have people uh, leave, leave messages in the mailbox on the building. We don't need no niggers here. Go back to Africa. Uh -huh. Those are the kinds of things yeah. that my wife and I had to endure for the call. Right, so there, in, have, right there in Saskatoon? Right in Saskatoon. We don't need so, no niggers here. Exactly. We have lots of pastors here. Why, why, why did you come here? And that, those were the kinds of things we would have to deal with to, to, to you know, uh, not validate, but to be able to, to stand because we knew that God called us, right? And we now knew the enemy couldn't defeat us in the area of our mind. Now it's become overt. Now it's become physical. It's become right in front of me. Right here, they're challenging me and challenging the call of God. Uh, don't you know we got lots of pastors here? Don't you know we got enough Bible school graduates here? Why do we need you? Hmm. But, hmm. you know, I had to constantly go back to prayer. And it's in prayer that God would constantly remind me, I'm the one who called you. And if, and if I'm leading, I'm yes. feeding. Yes. And if I guide... I provide. That's right. So I want to say to your viewers right. tonight, uh, Apostle Dave, if you're worried about answering the call and how you will be fed, I have this word for you. If God is the one who is responsible for you being led, the Lord hmm. will be the one responsible to make sure you're fed. That's right. If he's That's the right. one that is guiding you, He'll be the one that will be providing for you. Hmm. Up until today, like I said, almost 26 years now, or a little bit over 26 years since I came here, I've, I've never begged for bread. My children have never gone hungry. My children have never gone without shoes, never gone without clothes. Uh, in fact, I've gone, I've, I've gone from lack to abundance. Hallelujah. That's the call to Saskatoon Full Gospel. And at, at a juncture, Apostle Dave, at, at a certain juncture, the Lord began to start to shift the ministry so that we, we no longer were just a localized, you know, uh, voice and a localized um, house. The hmm. Lord then called us to establish these apostolic houses across this province. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, the Lord has used you as one of those voices to, to release prophetically and apostolically the decrees and declarations that you've released over this ministry, this yeah. being the, the, the center or the headquarters for, you know, we have seven, yeah. eight churches now in this province as a result. Now, had I... Had I run away the first time I met some persecution or some opposition, whether it be in the spirit or in my mind, the devil attacking me, or even people personally, you know, attacking me and telling me, we don't need you Africans here. Yeah, go back to Africa. Wow. We got enough preachers here. Yeah, we got enough Bible school graduates. Uh, we don't need you yet. Wow. So, you know, after almost three decades, we now have a Bible school that runs out of here. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we have, you know, you, you, you already mentioned some of the nations yeah. that we have been working with partners around the globe and our impact in the, and our footprint now has gone beyond just what it was, Churchill Park, full gospel. We went out from there, you know, to the next level, Saskatoon, full gospel out from Saskatoon Full Gospel, uh, which were, again was just, you know, a city church to where we are now, where we are Bridge Ministry International, which we are 
not just a city uh, and, a, and a localized ministry, but a provincial ministry, but also a national and global ministry. But, you know, it, it, takes, it takes somebody who's resolute hmm. when you're called. Hmm. And, and, and I noticed you, you, you had given me several things there, called. You gave me called, four things you've been yeah, talking about. Yeah, four things that I mentioned, yeah. Called, chosen, commanded, and commissioned. So I, look, I, so, I looked at those things Wednesday night, you know, just Wednesday night gone, and some of the listeners, uh, my, my members and others online will remember that we were talking about the call on Wednesday night. And I, I mentioned those four um, areas. So so in, 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 in realizing that you've been called, that's the first, first level, that's the first right? thing, yeah. And then the second level uh, that helps you stand and be resolute and steadfast yeah. is to know that God chose you. Yes, oh, the question, yes, the question uh, I, I constantly had for God when I first came here. Could you not have chosen somebody else? <laughs> you know the answer the Lord gave me. You have not chosen me and I've chosen you. That too, but he said, you're not my first choice. Ah. <laughs> I chose many others who turned me down, who thought that serving me and working for me was below them. But I found yeah, I think, in you. I think, I think you need to go that again. I think, I think you need to go over that again. That, that, that's, a, that's a very important point. Apostle Dave, when, when, when I knew that I was called and I'd faced all those challenges initially, you know, to try to discourage me and try to get me to abort the call, to get me to, 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 to run back, you know. Uh, and I mean, I said to you earlier today, I'd love to be able to come plant a church in the Caribbean somewhere. Uh, because when I came here, and I found out that mercury goes below zero. And the first winter I got there was minus 47. And I thought, oh my God, the devil brought me here to kill me. Can't be God that brought me here. Anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, after I passed the, the first test that I'm not going anywhere, I'm here to stay. Mm. If anybody has a problem with me being here, then they must leave. Mm. I, I purpose in my heart, I'm going to outlive them. I'm going to outlast them. Mm. It's, the call, it's the call. It's the call. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. these questions arose in my heart and these in my personal time with the Lord that I would have. I'd ask, Lord, why have you chosen me? Are there not enough? Because now... I was hearing the same thoughts that some of the opposers were giving me. What do we need you here for? We got lots of pastors who are unemployed yet. We got lots of graduates coming out of Bible school who would gladly take this, this post. It's, it's not enough to just be a Bible school graduate. Uh, you know, anybody can go and study theology. You have to have the call. And when you have the call upon okay. your life, Yes. It makes the difference. Yes. So we passed the first test. And then the, the, the thing that the Lord really, really spoke into my heart was when I asked, so why did you choose me? Are there not enough men of God yet, women of God yet in this country? Are there not enough qualified people? The, the, the answer from the Lord was, is I, you're, you're not my first choice. I've already mm. asked many of these people to stand in the gap for me in this hour. Mm. And they all turned me down because they thought serving me and, and being used of me is below them. Uh, so I, I've raised you up in uh, the, the faraway country of Africa. And now I'm importing you here so that you will be able to carry forward my vision mm. you will be able to enlarge my kingdom mm. and, and you know that was so refreshing to hear because you know when you're called and when you're chosen the one thing about the enemy constantly will try to get in your mind and make you start to question or second guess whether you're chosen 
and called. Yes. And I know yes. that you face that, I face that. Yes. And I know there are those viewers that are watching us tonight and listening to us. Yes. And they're saying, man, this is me this man is talking about. Apostle David, this guy is talking about me. I've had challenges with the call. I've, I've, I've had to try to figure out how I'm going to pay for this. You know, I've had people challenge me that, do I think I'm special? I'm better than them. Why do I think God would choose me? Well, God never uses man's measuring stick for choosing That's right. kings. That's God right. Never, God never raises a king based on, on uh, man's you know, aptitude test. God has his own way. He qualifies those who are disqualified by man. So, uh, you know, so I, I think that's a powerful lesson for those that are watching us is to yes. know that God, when he chooses you, uh, God doesn't make a mistake. That's right. That's you right. Know. That call of God is one, his choice. Exactly. His, the act of his will. He exactly. called you. Exactly. Secondly, he has chosen you out of Absolutely. all. Exactly. He has chosen you. Again, yes. that is an act of his will. Absolutely. Thirdly, he has commanded you and me. Whoever he has called, he has commanded. The, Go ye therefore and yeah, teach yes, all nations. Yes, yeah, yes, the command he gave me, Dave. That's the you command. Know the com you know the command of Joshua. Uh huh. Most Moses, my servant, is dead. Is dead. Now I command you. Uh -huh. You go. Yes. So, so you know, with all that happened, the Lord was saying, "No, no, don't even consider the past. That is shut off. That's done. I've chosen you, and now I command you to go and do what I've called you to do. As I was with Moses, uh, I'll surely be with you. Ah, uh, you know, be strong." Be courageous. Mm. Those are those are two things that, that I had to do in this 26 years. I had to be strong and I had to be courageous, very courageous, because I've had so much fear attack my life. Uh, you know, people have come with all kinds of, you know, uh, conspiracy theories. But we, my wife and I have always taken everything to prayer and fasting. That's been the key for us here. And if you're watching us tonight and you're contemplating answering Hallelujah. the call, let it be through the medium of prayer and fasting. You'll never go wrong. Make that your, make that your template. Make that your foundation for anything you do, regardless of whether we're talking about the call or not. But if you're fasting and praying, you'll always have the, the support of the Lord. So there's a call then for brothers and sisters in Christ to get back to that place of prayer and fasting. Because this kind go not out, but by prayer and fasting. And I mean, that was said. The Lord Jesus himself said that. When yeah. in relation to the demon, the demon possessed guy that the disciples could not cast out. Yes. They asked him quietly, why could we not cast this demon out? Jesus said, this kind mm. goes not out, but by fasting and prayer. Yeah. And there's some things in our lives that we will not realize, will not be clarified, will not be very, very um, uh, settled in our spirit. Unless we spend some unhurried quality time with God. And we remain steadfast in the faith. Because there's so many things, Apostle, to capsize us in the faith or shipwreck us. Oh, in yeah. The faith. So many things are designed to throw us over the cliff. Absolutely. To make us give up. For example, you, a black man from South Africa, come up to Saskatoon in Canada, and you are seeing <laughs> a, a bill, after a while, out of provocation, you are seeing a poster. We don't want no niggas here. Yeah. That that can be very debilitating. Oh, yes. That can hit you where it hurts. Yeah, because exactly. Because there were not many black people there. So no. you knew who they were talking about. Exactly. And, and, and Dave, I would get calls 2 o'clock in the morning. 
people who used to attend the church who had a drinking problem, alcohol. They'd be drunk in the middle of the night. They'll call my house number, my landline, and tell me also to go back to Africa. But <laughs> when you know you're called, when you know you're chosen, you, you have a foundation already that, you know, you're not going to be moved easily. That's what makes the difference, you know. Exactly. That's what makes the difference. When you know that you know. Jesus said, for this purpose I was born. Exactly. For this cause I came into the world. You hear those two statements yeah. that Jesus made? When you know that you know that you know that, or you exactly. know them, you know those two things, exactly. you will not be capsized or shipwrecked. Right. But there are things that are designed to resist you, to resist the call on your life, to resist the anointing on your life, to resist the revelation that God is giving you, to resist your commitment and consistency and your exactly. steadfastness. There are things designed to resist you, to push you back. And if you're not pushing against it, you will be capsized. Exactly. You'll be shipwrecked. Exactly. You'll be packed up and gone back to exactly yeah and then I, I would have forfeited all this that god has done in the last two decades uh, almost wow. three decades wow i would wow. have shipwrecked my my legacy uh, apostle you know there's a legacy that that is being you know crafted here yeah and long after i'm gone my legacy will live on but That's had i aborted right in the beginning there you would be no been, legacy you would have been most miserable down in south africa the most frustrated the most man. Miserable. You'd be out of will, out of the will of God, out of God's purpose, out of that man that he placed on your life. And what he's given you up there, you know, would have been just being in limbo. It exactly. would have been a miserable. I want to advise anyone tonight who are on stream and listening, and even those who will look at this after. Yeah. The call of God is one of the most important things in your life. First of all, it's a high calling. Mm. In Philippians, Paul talk about that. All right? The, the high calling of God that we have in Christ Jesus. Right. It's also a holy calling. In 2 mm -hmm. Timothy, he talks about that. The holy calling that we have of God. And thirdly, it's a heavenly calling. And he talks about that in Hebrews 3. Okay? So, so I mean, the call of God has much significance to us. Amen. And once we connect with it, it was when Paul connected with the will and the call of God on his life that his life turned for the better, you know. Absolutely. He was miserable. He was on the wrong track. He was beating Christians. He was coming against the church. He was kicking against Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was on the wrong road. Absolutely. But when God met him on the road to Damascus yes. and licked him off his high horse, Paul, or Saul as he was then, became a changed man. Exactly. And you see, that change was prefaced by blindness. Yeah. Three days he was blind, he couldn't see. Mm -hmm. Right? And in that time, he did a lot of soul searching, a lot of self-examination. Absolutely. And a lot of cutting off of what he knew that was erroneous. Right. It was just law and legal, but no spirit. Exactly. And God changed the man. Dead letter. The call of God is you know, very, You know, very I think important. somebody is watching you, Apostle David, and me tonight, that, you know, if, if, if they don't answer the call, yeah. you know, I always describe the call like this. Earlier on, you heard my phone ringing in the back. Yeah. If you don't answer the phone, it's like the phone ringing at 2 a.m. in the morning when you're very, very tired, you're fatigued, and the person is insistent. The call of God is such that if, if Joshua had to say to God when Moses died, no, I think you got the wrong person. I don't think I can lead these people. <laughs> I, I've been called as a second. I, I'm, I'm just a, you know, a, a second person. My, my gifting is only to serve as a second, 
I'm, I'm, I'm not one that's supposed to be out front. Can you imagine all the victories that uh, was wrought yeah. by his life and his yeah. hands? The, the children of Israel would have been defeated. They would have missed the opportunity to come into the promised land. Mm -hmm. And so there's somebody watching us tonight, I believe by the spirit, who is feeling like uh, definitely God is called. They felt the tugging. They felt the, you know, the hovering of the Holy Spirit on them. But they are challenged with this thought. And maybe you're in an environment among people who have constantly told you that, you know, you, you're a good second. And that uh, your role is, is never going to be anything other than a second. Uh, I don't know, but I feel to say tonight that that is a lie from the enemy. God has called you up and God has called you over. Uh, as you can see, we are in a time of, un, I mean, unprecedented, uh, 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 you know, uh, a season that we never planned for. I, I'm persuaded that there are more like this that are coming upon us suddenly. And if you don't move now out into the call that God called you, you will be like Apostle David earlier said, you are going to be one of the most miserable people on the planet. Hmm. Oh so hear the word of the Lord tonight. Yes. And respond to the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, a verse that in two verses, I want to really leave it, um, share with people who are those who are listening, beloved brethren, beloved brothers and sisters. I know a lot of beloved brothers and sisters are online right now. And they are, they, are, they are viewing both yourself and I, you know, in this session together. And we're looking at remaining steadfast in the faith, eh? the call of God. You see, in this post-COVID um, uh, world that we, we will be in, when mm -hmm. all is past and gone, right? It's going to be a different caliber of Christian, you know, a different caliber. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, very familiar verse. Yeah. Says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. <laughs> See that word steadfast? Be steadfast. Ah. Always. Immovable. Always abounding in the work oh, of the Lord. Come on. Knowing on. that awesome. your labor uh, is not in vain. In vain. Never. He, he encouraged the church, the Corinthians, to be steadfast because he knew that every bone, every muscle, every mm. ligament, mm. every tissue, every vein, Hallelujah. every nerve in your body Sabra, Sabra. needed Sabra. to be steadfast if we are Amen. going to make it. Yes. Because there are so many things. Yes. That are out to destroy us. The devil cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He there's so many things to destroy us mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically, spiritually. Yes. yes. In every aspect of our life, even our finances, he's going yes. to work on the financial aspect of your life to keep you defeated. Mm. If we are not steadfast, we can slip. Yes. And we can be moved. And also, Acts 20, 24. So that was 1 Corinthians 15, 58. 58 and now yes. Acts 20, 24. Hear the words of the Apostle Paul himself, who had tremendous experiences of difficulty, shipwreck, imprisonment, yeah. being beaten, being whipped. Mm. Yes. All Life kinds of things yeah. through. Even among his own brethren. Yeah. Yet he said, verse 24 of Acts 20, but none of these things move me. Yeah, none. None of these things. And just think of the many things you know that Paul endured. And imagine what he had in mind when he said, none of these things. Because there were so many things he endured. Right. So many challenges he had to fight through. So much, mm. so many struggles. Oh, he, Lord. 
He said, none of these things move me, nor do I count my life there to myself. Mm -hmm. See that kind of commitment? Yeah, come on. So that I may finish my race with joy. That yeah. blessed me, you know. That last phrase that blessed me, you know. So that I might finish my race with joy. With joy. With joy. And when he was talking about the race, he meant the call of God. He meant fulfilling the mandate God has given him. Yes. He carrying out what God has called him to do with his life. Amen. So when I finish that, I want to finish it with joy. Yes, Lord. Aye. To finish the call of God on your life with joy is a blessing. And the ministry which yes. I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace. Amen. The grace. Amen, that Apostle. upon your life, Apostle Terry. Those two verses, I think, are upon your life. Amen. It's your God picking you, up, picking you up out of South Africa, out of Durban. Yeah. I was, I was there in Durban with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely place Durban is, of course. Amen. Lovely place. But picked you out of Durban and carried you to Saskatoon, one of the coldest places in this western hemisphere take that That's from good. me I could <laughs> say it because I experienced it last last year huh? it was last yeah. year I experienced it I minus mean minus, minus 47 yeah a Barbadian pastor huh? minus 47 mm -hmm. if I didn't know you and if I didn't really know, if I didn't know, I would think you, I would think you want to kill me. <laughs> that devil is a liar. Uh, but it was, I enjoyed that. I really yeah. did. I really. Well, you know, I, you know I, I, the I was scripture. Just for the occasion. Apostle Dave, you know the question, uh, the the scripture you just quoted there, uh, Acts 20, 24, yes. the last yes. part there. Paul says, the ministry for which God called him. Yes. And I think some of our viewers tonight, you know, there, there are those who are made to believe that they have been called by their pastor or they've been called by their apostle. No, it's the Lord who calls us. Because mm -hmm. if, if, if man calls you, man will fire you. <laughs> say, that, say that again. <laughs> You know, is, <laughs> you know that thing is not of man. Exactly, that's the thing. You 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 saying how Paul is encouraging us there, uh, Acts twenty twenty four. Yeah. And then in the last last portion there he says, the call for which, the ministry for which God called me which to. God called me to. Yeah, not the not man, not, not the man. presbytery, not the board of elders. No. Or the board of demons, I mean deacons. <laughs> but but I think your viewers understand that you would not be standing today. I would not be standing today because if we felt called by men, uh, men can fire you anytime. Men can, they can cancel your contract anytime. It's but true. when you're called by God, you know. That makes a difference. Yeah, it's like a marriage, right? It's until death do us part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he, God is not changing his mind all the time like men change their mind. No, no. You know? No. That call is sure. That exactly. call is a sanctified call. As a matter of fact, he has called us, he has chosen us, he yes. has commanded us, yes. and commissioned. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yes. And, and as long as we have that in right perspective, right. You know, life makes a difference. And look what it did to you. And look what it did to me. Exactly. God called me from Guyana, you know, after spending so many years down there. Um, God gave me a vision to return home to Barbados. Born in Barbados. Born mm. in Bayland. Mm. Um, God took me to Guyana to the backside of the desert. Yeah. You know, in a place called Kaituma, first of all, and then into Georgetown. You know, and it was as if God took me out of my homeland 
carried me to Guyana yeah. and then to bring me back to my homeland. Amen. When I returned to my homeland, Barbados, I felt like a stranger. Mm. For the first six months, it was extremely difficult for me. Resettling in my homeland mm. where I was born. It, it was difficult because I was so involved I was involved in so much ministry. Right. And being young and energetic and passionate and strong. You, you, I mean, in those days, we were not like today. I, I, I believe like, I, I have a feeling sometimes like Christianity seems to have lost. Um, yeah. that, that believe, I should believe not Christianity, believe it or people seem to have lost that passion and yeah. that commitment. Right for God like we had yeah. when we were young. Exactly. I mean, there was such a passion. Yeah. And then the Lord took me up, spoke to me, and I said, what? And I couldn't wrap my head around leaving Guyana and coming back to Barbados, where I haven't been for so many years, and settling. I couldn't wrap my head around it. Mm. But then God spoke. God gave me a vision as well. And then I had confirmations. And then I had a peace of God came into my heart after that. Mm -hmm. And once you have the peace of God, once you yeah. have confirmation, and once you have the word from the Lord speaking to you, Amen. you can't deny those three things. Exactly. There's no way you can deny exactly. those three things. God speaking, Absolutely. right? The peace of God. Yes. And in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Yes. Those three are important. And then the fourth one, to add a fourth one in there will be growth. Once yes. you're seeing growth in your life, in the area of your connection or your connectivity with the spirit of God on this issue of the call, once you're seeing growth also happening in, in, and, and you, you're growing spiritually in it, then you know that yeah, this is God. Absolutely. So it, was enough, it was enough for me to say, okay, goodbye. But that it was a teary time for me, teary, mm. teary, crying, exactly. teary time for me to do that and to come back to my homeland, yeah. Barbados, to raise up what God has raised up. Amen. You know, and, and, and this, is, this, this, this is what I, I saw years ago. I saw it years ago. It, mm. It's now materialized. It's now here. Thank and there's you, much Jesus. more I know God has to do as well. Thank you, right? Jesus. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Yes. But 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 I thank God when I when I, when I leave and I'm gone, you know, there's something there. Yes. That will outlast me, outlast my my trail, outlast my grand, exactly. outlast exactly the brothers and sisters exactly. who are here and who are part of it. But outlast all of us. Exactly. You know? God has established our work. Yes. Okay. And, 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 and I really want to thank God, not only in Barbados, but throughout the island and also throughout the Caribbean, throughout the world, restoration yes. is now has been established and established. Right. All right. And I, I see that like, like, your, like your call as well, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, there were times I wanted to go back to Guyana. There were times I would have gone and bought a plane ticket. And yeah. find myself back into Ghana because I knew the amount of things that were involved in. I would have been back into them immediately. But you would have been a miserable man. Ah, that's it. That's it. It would not have been what God wanted. And I no. would have become very miserable after a while. Absolutely. So stay in the will of God. Stay where God has planted you. And in yeah. spite of how hard it is, Father will provide. Amen. Father will honor you. Father yeah. will bless you. Absolutely. Father will prosper you. He will, you will prosper where you have been planted. Amen. And that was my that, that was my key. That, that was my answer. Amen. So, in spite of the difficulties I endured and the persecution, the trials and the testings, it was difficult. But remaining steadfast in the faith. Amen. Is the key, Pastor Noel. You, you know, while you're talking, Apostle Dave, uh, you know that scripture you quoted earlier there, uh, Corinthians 15, 58. Is that correct? First Corinthians 15, 58? 
Yes, first Corinthians 15, 58. You, you, you said something powerful there. You said about Paul saying when he ends, when it's all said and done, he yes. wants to end it with joy. Yes. And there, you know, I, I believe by the spirit tonight again, there are people who are watching us tonight and there'll be people who will watch us after the fact. They'll, they'll, they'll log on to this Facebook of yours and they'll catch yes. this broadcast. Uh -huh. But there, I sense there are people out there who have been in ministry per se, mm. who it's not a joy anymore. You know, it, 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 they're, they're enduring it. They're not enjoying it. I mean, I've traveled with you in I don't know how many nations, but it's such a joy to be able to do the work of the Lord. It's not a chore. It's not a, a burden. You don't, you don't endure it? Exactly. And I sense that there's somebody who's watching us tonight yeah. who's been in ministry and ministry has become such a hardship. It's, it, they're, they're enduring rather than enjoying the fruit of their labor, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So let me just say to that person tonight. Oh, my God. That the Lord knows where yeah, we are yeah, at so all calm. times. Yeah. And especially like we've been discussing, uh, the Lord will prosper you where he plants you. Yes. If the Lord never plant you somewhere, then yes. maybe the chances are you're enduring because you weren't planted by the Lord there. Maybe it's time for you to cut and move to where God wants you to be planted. Hmm and watch God prosper you and favor you where he plants you. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, you can't end your ministry and your last chapter of your life cannot be that, you know, you endured uh, hardships only and the ministry, you know, was such a bore and drag and it took everything out of you that your family after you gone don't want to have anything to do with ministry or anything to do with the Lord. Uh, that should never be your last words no. on your gravestone or your tombstone. No. So just a thought I had there, Apostle Dave, while you were sharing that. Yeah. You want to finish that with joy. That's exactly. in Acts, yeah. That's there in Acts 20, 24. That I may finish my race with joy. Finish what God has called me to do with joy. Was Amen. it joy all the time? No. It was bruises, it was persecution, <laughs> it was imprisonment, it was hunger, was being shipwrecked. He was, remember he was left at sea uh, several times, shipwrecked? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Left all for dead. That. But Beaten he said, I want to dead. finish it with joy. In yeah. spite of all of that, I allowed none of that to move me. Because exactly. I want to finish my race with Not joy. Moved. That's That's stubborn. That's stubborn, unyielding commitment. That's what I we need. I commit my life to God, man. That's and I'm what not, we I'm, need. I'm, I'm, I'm unyielding. I'm going to yield to him. Amen. You know, he, he is my everything. Amen. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is nothing. Are not worthy to be compared. Nothing in comparison. The, the glory which shall be revealed. In Amen. Us. You know, it's a call. It is. Um, it's important obey the call yes sir because the call comes with the choosing it comes with the commanding aspect as well it mm -hmm. comes with the commissioning yep and all four of them are very significant for our spiritual development our effectiveness yes our ministry unto God Hallelujah. Glory to him. Look what your obedience has caused in Saskatoon. Yes, sir. I'm sure now no more plaque cards will be put up. <laughs> no. 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 Put up now. no. Because no. You, you, they realize that will not move you. No. And I think the enemy knows that. <laughs> he know that that will not move you in this day and in this season and we really want to thank God for that then you look at the call the, the, the call of Paul you know in Acts 9 that really 
is the point at which his life was transformed. Acts 9 from verse 3. It says, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. Mm. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? <laughs> you see the line of that question? Yeah. Why are you persecuting me? And Jesus talking to him, you know. Yeah. So when you're persecuting the children of God, you're persecuting, you're persecuting Jesus too. You're touching him. Yeah. And he said, who are you, Lord? So mm. immediately, Saul knew this was the Lord. Yeah. He reacts, who are you, Lord Adonai? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> How come he know now this is God all of a sudden? Yeah. Then God ready for you. He gave you the longest rope. Mm -hmm. Then he ready to pull that rope back. Obey God and follow his will. Follow his purpose. You have not chosen me. I have chosen you. Paul, uh, uh, Saul addressed the voice as, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus. Yeah. To me, that was enough. Amen. Jesus, Jesus could have stopped right there. Yeah. But he went on. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the convictions or the goal. Yeah. Mm. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? So immediately we see a submission from this Saul here now. A submission to a higher authority. A submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. What do you want me to do? This is the question all of us should be saying tonight. Then the Lord said to him, arise, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, mm. hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground. When his eyes were open, he saw no one. He was blind. God blinded him. In Barbados, they have a slang like that. But they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was there three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. He went into an absolute fast. Mm into an absolute fast. No drinking, no eating. God, you got to change me. And wow. indeed, the rest is history. Then um, Ananias came to him, eh? and there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And to him, the Lord said unto him in a vision, Ananias? <laughs> and he said, here am I, Lord. So the Lord said to him, arise and go to the street called Straight. And inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul. You see, God know where you are. Amen. <laughs> we got, yeah. Then the call yeah. of God is like, God know where you are. He know yeah, where exactly. to position you, where to locate you. Because he know yeah. who to send to you to give you the word of commissioning. Amen. The word of, of um, exhortation and release. Go to the place, right, uh, in the house of one Judas and ask for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. In other words, he's in a three-day fast. And in a vision, he see he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive his sight. In a vision. Mm. So here the Lord speaking to Ananias. That's why every prophet, when you have that prophetic call on your life, obey God. Don't be afraid of their faces. And don't be yeah, afraid exactly. of who God is sending you to. Yeah. God was sending Ananias, the prophet here, to Saul in Damascus at the house of one named Judas. Right? And he said he saw a man named Ananias come and put his hands on him. 
Then Ananias answered and said, here Ananias responds, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, mm. this notorious man, this man called Saul. I have heard of many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. He yeah. has that authority. But the Lord said unto Ananias, go, for he is a chosen vessel. I love this. There you go. <laughs> chosen go, vessel. For he is a chosen vessel to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For Amen. I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. Out of that, Ananias went. He had no more excuse. He didn't make any more bazabaz in front of God. He went. And God used him to birth this notorious Saul. Mm. He was now transformed yes. to be an apostle, a chosen vessel. Right. Called, chosen, commanded to go and to carry this gospel and commissioned or being equipped and empowered. That's the commissioning. Amen. To carry forth. Look Praise what God. that call has done in your life. Yeah. In Canada. Look what yeah. it has done in my life here in Barbados and the Caribbean. And look what it can do. Just imagine what it can do in the life of many who are looking on right now. Amen. Amen. God is speaking. Yeah. No respect of persons. Sheba Saramaka. God is speaking. He qualifies the call, Apostle Dave. Mm -hmm. He does. He does. He does not <laughs> call the qualified. Correct. As you say, he qualifies. Yeah. The call. The call. Yeah. This call is a noble calling. Exactly. This call is a high calling. Mm -hmm. Isaiah had a similar call. Yes. Yes. You know? Here am I. Sim huh? Here, Here am I. Send me, Lord. Yeah. Here am I, he said. Send me. The Lord touched his lips with the mm. from the fire. Yeah. He had an outstanding call of God upon his life. And that made the difference in Isaiah's, in, um, in his life. Yeah. Here am I, Lord, send me. In other words, he was ready to respond to that call. I sense, Apostle Noah, that there's some who have been struggling with the call of God on their lives for quite a few years that are listening tonight. Amen. And it has carried them down, upside down, up and down, up and down, up and down road. It has brought a lot of dissatisfaction, mm -hmm. confusion. It has brought a lot of discouragement in their lives. Yes. Because once you fail to connect, mm. If that call, yeah, you fail to connect. Yeah, Jesus said, I must be about my father's, father's business. business. I will want you to pray tonight, Pastor Apostle, and to release the word of God over the lives of those that God has called mm. and who have been struggling with it. Mm. For quite some time now. I sense tonight is a releasing night. Mm. You could have packed up and gone back to South Africa. Mm -hmm. You had two things going against you. Yeah. The ostracism and racism in Canada at that time. Yeah. Plus you had the extremely cold weather. Yeah, yeah. You're not accustomed to in South Africa. Yeah. 
there are two things in your favor at that time to go back. But against all odds, yes, sir. you stood your ground. Before you pray, what caused you, if there is one thing that you can wrap it up in, what caused you amidst those negative challenges to remain? I'm going to try to put it as succinctly as I can. Whose report will you believe? Mm. That's the one line I had to grapple with. Whose voice carried more weight? Did the voices of my naysayers, my opposers, my haters, did their voices carry more weight than the voice of God that called me out of obscurity in South Africa. And constantly, I would be reminded, the voice of God called me out. That's what I would say. Let the voice of God resound. Let the voice of your naysayers, your haters, your false prophets, your whatever you want to call them, your opposers, let their voices fall flat to the ground. That's what's kept me, Apostle Dave. Hmm. That's what's propelled me. Hmm. Hmm. Knowing the voice of God hmm. makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. That is what kept me as wow. well. Wow. That is what kept me as well. Had it hadn't been for my confidence in the word of God mm -hmm. and knowing that he is the one who called, I will not be standing today. Absolutely. But you know, a verse that kept me throughout my years a verse that is the hallmark of my stand in spite of everything else. Was it easy? No. Mm -mm. No. But a verse that kept me throughout my years was 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. But verse 23 is also very nice, but verse 24 is the one I want most. Well, let me read from verse 23 of First Thessalonians chapter 5. It says, Now may the God of peace himself mm. sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, mm -hmm. soul, mm -hmm. and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you mm -hmm. is faithful. Who will also do it? Amen. He who calls you, that's the verse that I want mostly. Mm. First Thessalonians 5.24. He who calls and I think the word that I held on to was the call. Yeah. He who calls. So it's not man that called. Yes. It's God. Amen. Gamaliel said, if this thing is of man, it will come to naught. Yes. If it's of God, you can't do anything about it. Exactly. <laughs> Can't stop it, man. You can't stop it. <laughs> he who calls. <laughs> he who calls you is faithful. The yes. word faithful. God, it, it, it's his nature to be faithful. It's his attribute to be faithful. It's his character to be faithful. God is never unfaithful. God Amen. remains 
faithful Amen. period. Amen. And he wouldn't give you more than you can bear. Absolutely. No, he wouldn't put more upon you than you can carry. He remains faithful. He who calls you is faithful. Mm. We have to rest and depend on the faithfulness of God. Yes. Ay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, that's a blessing. That really Oh, Rabba Sibra Seca, I love Rash, the Laboriela Casaba Bond. Yes. Be confident, yes. Philippians yes. 1 6 says. Philippians of 1 6. One thing. Being confident of this very thing that he who began, Who's begun, a, begun good work. a good work in you. They completed until the day of Jesus Christ. That Amen. is my confidence. Amen. Amen. Amidst all the cursing, amidst all yes. the criticism, amidst all those who would like to lick my head off. Yeah. Amidst all who will come against you, you know, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will yep. complete it. Pastor Terry, Pastor Terry, God is complete. Yes, sir. Absolutely powerful verse. Ah. Re refreshing, especially in this time. Mm. Mm. What more What more do we need in a time like this? He is the one that God has started. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Yes, I want those who are sensing that call. I know some responded on Wednesday night because we started on the call of God when we, we talk about it. Huh? Yeah, I know that um, some of you were really touched on Wednesday night and I spoke with some after and they confess, yes, God is speaking to them. And I know that they are online tonight as well, again. Uh, this may be your night for further confirmation and your night of release. God maybe prepared you on Wednesday and he's now confirming and ratifying and validating it on Friday night with Apostle Noel being in my company uh, tonight as well. God is orchestrating a powerful manifestation for your life. He's a God of completeness, a God of completion, a God that is doing a work in the hearts of his people. And let me tell you, there is no disappointment, no disappointment to anyone who just released themselves yes. to the Lordship of our God and persuaded that neither death nor life no principalities, no power, no present, no things to come, no any living. Nothing shall be, able, be to. able to separate me from the love of God, which is no. in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Nothing. Man. Nothing. 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 God is speaking to you right now, my brothers and sisters. Open up your heart as Apostle Noel pray and bring that release. Bring you to that place where the call of God is cemented and sealed. Mm. In your life where you can then begin to put things into perspective hallelujah yes. yeah father we praise and bless you hallelujah ah. blessed 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 be your name ah. thank you god thank you for the timing thank you for the timing of this broadcast lord i thank you ah, lord that you you know all things father you know where we are at any given day, time oh, of the day you know what we're up to like uh, yeah. Apostle david said earlier he know us by name you know the, the the number of hairs we have on our head yeah so father tonight even as we conclude and we bring this broadcast to a close we know that there are those in the in in the valley of decision here tonight we know that yes. there are those who are weighed in the balances here tonight yes and we want to speak a word tonight to release them from the yes, bondage God. from the claws from the yes, chains Father. of doubt 
unbelief and confusion in the name of Jesus. I yes, command Father. those chains to let go. Chains in the area of their minds. Chains in the area of their hearts uh, that have kept them back from, no, from moving into what God mm. has for them. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be released tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray right now for those who are being held back because of past disappointments. I come against the results and the fruit of those disappointments tonight in the name of Jesus. I break its power over you and Jesus. I command it to be cast away so Jesus. that you're free to respond to the Jesus. call. You're free to respond to the Lord who chose Jesus. you. He chose you tonight. He's calling you out from that place of lack. He's calling Jesus. you up higher from that place where you've been diminished through words of, of curses and Jesus. words of, of insensitive people. I break the lies that have been spoken over you. Jesus. I break the power of those tongues tonight that have kept you in captivity Jesus. and have enslaved you and rendered you helpless Jesus. and hopeless to respond to the call that you've been chosen to. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I release the power of God tonight for Jesus. your breakthrough. I release you into, into all that God has called you to. I yes. release the resources tonight so that you can yes. respond. You can go forth without any fear, any intimidation, any yes. insecurity. In the name of Jesus, be released. Be free tonight. Be, be restored for those of you who are, who are turning back to the Lord. Those of you who once walked in it. Those of you who once experienced it. Now in the name of Jesus, we break the power of the backsliding that you've been through. In the name of Jesus, we call you out of that place of lukewarmness. That cold place, we call you up higher. We pull you out tonight from that place of lack tonight in the name of Jesus. For every frustration, for every disappointment, for every negative word spoken over your life, we speak the life of God tonight. We speak a Zoe life word to you tonight in the name of Jesus. Arise tonight to your full potential. We call you up higher to the prevailing word that has been spoken over your life as a child tonight. You rise tonight to meet that prevailing prophet. <laughs> Word that is over your life and over uh, your family tonight. In uh, the name of Jesus, I speak to a brother yeah. Stephen, tonight that is watching us. In the name of Jesus, yeah. come up higher. You're free to move out from that place. You've been enslaved in your mind. In the name of Jesus, I speak to a sister Simpson yes. tonight. In the name of Jesus, be free, Sister Simpson. In the name of Jesus, no longer bound by what people think, no longer bound by the fear of what man thinks, but coming out hot, coming out on top, coming out hot, coming out on fire for God tonight. In the name of Jesus, every disappointment disappear, every despondency dissipate. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, be loose tonight. And be free to be all God has called you to be. Jesus. I see great things coming through your life tonight in the name of Jesus. I see the Lord using you in great things. The Bible says that Jesus said to his disciples, yes. greater thing, greater works than these you will that do. You do. So you I don't. speak that over you tonight, that yes. you will do greater things than you had even imagined when you yes. first came to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless God for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. My prayer is that each of you will know the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe, according to Ephesians 1, that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power in your life. Yes. Due to your obedience to that call. The Lord is saying, he remains Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides for your every need. Amen. For your every situation. Amen. Whatever your struggles are, mm -hmm. God is acquainted with them. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, 
he will never forsake you. Amen. In your walk of obedience, he's always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, don't think. Jesus. And allow the thoughts of if I will make it create Jesus. doubt in your mind. Hallelujah. Yes, you will. And yes, you can. Yes, you can. I am with you. Mm. Therefore, know and be reminded this night that I'm confirming quite a lot of things I've spoken to you about mm. the last several Jesus. months. And even during this lockdown quarantined situation, I intervene in the yes, quietness thank of you, the Lord. times. Thank you, Lord. And I continue to drop things into your spirit. Mm. And I use these last two nights to confirm and to validate, to convict, yes. to break through. Yes, Lord. To clarify. Mm. And to reveal yes, Lord. myself in you and Jesus. my purpose for you and Jesus. my call on you. Hallelujah. Know that I will use you to do great things mm. in the nations of the earth. Jesus, Jesus. For this is not your only abiding place. I will use mm. you near and far. Yes, Lord. I will cause you to touch nations, my sons, my daughters. Yeah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I will cause the word comes from, that comes from your mouth to be like a fire. Mm. It will burn up. I will cause it to come forth like a sharp two-edged sword to cut. Yes. yes I will Lord. cause it to come forth like a sword anointment to soothe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Therefore, be encouraged mm. and be strengthened and be courageous. As I told Joshua, let not my word depart mm. from your mouth. Meditate, read, Amen. study, apply mm. my word. I will use you to do great exploits. Yes, my Thank sons you. and my daughters. Mm. In this Jesus. Behold, I do a new thing. Mm. Your setback during this season mm. is going to be your greatest comeback ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, lift up your head and be strong. Yes, Lord. Raise those shoulders that are drooping yes. down. Yes, Lord. Strengthen that stride in your feet. Jesus. For I am your strength. Yes. And I am the light of your life. Hallelujah. Fear not. For I am with you. Safe God. Hallelujah. 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 Apostle. Apostle, yeah, uh, just something quickly. Mm -hmm. There's a, a brother named Rodney who is watching on this broadcast. And I believe that the Lord would say to Rodney, don't try to compete with your brother. You have a brother that is always excelled, a brother who is always given accolades and who is given you know, mm. affirmation from mm. all different parts. The Lord mm. says, don't worry, my son, I'm going to elevate you. I'm going ah. to exalt you. Humble yourself. Ah. And in due time, in due season, I will lift you up. Do not try ah. to, to compete with your brother. Do not try to, 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 to be like him, but choose to be like me. I'm going to build you into the man of God that I know that you can be. I will build into you character, says the Lord, that will astound those around. You've lived in the shadow of your brother long enough. Ah. Now let me take you and mold you and make you My into God. the man of God I know you can be. My God. This is for this is for Rodney that is watching. My God. Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord. Hmm. Ah. 
And I see also the Lord speaking to Judy mm. and saying, Judy, I see things just being unraveled. Mm. Like a huge rope mm. just being unraveled from around your life. Mm. I mean, it had you kind of in, 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 in a straight because it, wrapped, it was wrapped around you. Thank you, that Lord. rope is being unraveled, Judy. Thank you, Jesus. And God is bringing you into a measure of freedom where your hands will be so free, your yes. body, your spirit, your heart, your Hallelujah. mind, your emotions. Ay, God is bringing you into an arena of greater boldness. And Hallelujah. He, has, he has released you from that bondage of the past. Mm. Jesus. They lift up your head and lift up your eyes, my daughter. Oh, God. In the For this is the season of freedom I've brought you into. Oh, my God is upon you. Mm. My hands are upon you this night. Jesus. And Deborah, God is working it out for you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Have no fear. Thank you, Jesus. Jehovah Jireh reigns forever. God yes. is working it out for you, Deborah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed be your Sibra name. Sarama. He's Blessed working it out for you. Thank and he's you, going Father. to work it out so hallelujah Lord. On we your bless behalf. you we praise you because you've come to a place where your faith is not being stretched mm, jesus and god says he's not going to disappoint thank but you there's a strong call of god on your life deborah thank you lord ah yeah 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 wonderful wonderful god says, mighty is the time for your manifestation mighty mighty, mighty. wonderful Lord. god jesus Great, great, great is our God. Hallelujah. Bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Mm. My friends, I want to thank all of you for really being here tonight. Mm. Really sense there's such an anointing and such a release. Mm. <laughs> I felt there's such a power of God's presence this evening. Mm. You're called of God. Yes, you are. He's called you for such a time as this. Yes. Now is your time to manifest. Oh, God. Now is your time. In the journey of life, there are winding roads, mountains high and valleys low. Mm -hmm. Though the road you call may be unknown, I'm still focused on the prize that's worth pressing forward. I will be what you called me to be. I will be what you have called me to be, Lord. I say yes. I say yes to your call. Lord, I my desire. Passionately is to be what you call me to be. Oh, my God. That's what I How far wherever Oh, mm -hmm. 
said, hey, Apostle David, I stopped by this post, and immediately you said, Deborah, God is working it out for you. Wow. Uh, immediately she stopped by. Praise God. Was called. I want to thank you, Deborah, for responding. Amen. Say unto you, God has you. God got you. He got your back. Mm. He has your back. And he's Amen. working it out for you. And that which you have been struggling with in the last several weeks is about to be straightened out, Deborah. Amen. You know why? There's a strong call of God on your life. Amen. God has used this night to validate, to confirm, and to let you know he has you covered. Hallelujah. Working it out for you. That's why it was so powerful tonight in that as soon as you stopped by this program, there your name was called. Amen. And he's saying to you, draw near to me with all your heart, my daughter. Draw near. Draw nearer. Draw near. If I'm drawing nearer to you now in this time. Yes. And you've spent some time with him during this season. And yet have been some bouts of discouragement you've been through and some frustration. Mm. But he's saying, he has you covered. Hallelujah. Working it out for you. Praise you. All Jesus. things work together for a good to them that love God and to those who are the called according Amen. to his purpose. You're going to have a glorious, outstanding testimony. Amen. God bless you tonight. Just respond to the call of God. He loves you. Apostle Terry, I want to thank you for being here, my brother. Salute, man of God. It's an honor having you, my friend. Honor is mine, man. Uh, Good to see you again. Amen. Let's do this again, man. I, I get of you on course. our program. Of course. I have to get you on, on mine. Yes, of course. I'll send you, you a know, link. You know, you just got to call let me know. Yes. I'll send I you a link. this again because God is yeah, I don't know what you do on Wednesdays, but you can come on ours on Wednesday. Good. All right. Oh, I have I have um the study on, on Wednesday night. We, uh, we work it out. We, we work, yes. Yeah, you you two hours behind me. I mean, in yes. front of me. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So Good. We'll, we'll work it so that when you we finish work it out. Your studies, yes. uh, you can come on to the program. Yeah, come on one to the other. Yes, yeah. that's good. Blessings right. on you and your family. 
Love Thank you, you dearly, man. Love you, my brother. Say hello right, to the family to me. Keep the faith, man. Yeah. And stay in warm Saskatoon now. <laughs> it's warm now. <laughs> I saw the sun shining bright today up there, man. January is gone, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dave. Thanks. I want to thank you for coming. And on behalf of Restoration Ministries, all the members who are here, sending love to you, sending love to us. Yeah, Monica, Jordan, Carol, Charles. Yeah, wonderful. Carol reminded okay. me, Bible study. She's telling me, don't make any mistake. <laughs> yes, she Carol, said I, said that. I told him. But we will, we will arrange the time differently. All right. Love yes. you. Yes. See you. I love you, my brother. God bless. Good. Amen. Um, that was so good having um, Apostle Terry, all the way from Saskatoon. And I just want to encourage you, Pastor Faye Godbold, I see you again tonight. Uh, Pastor Lamona Phillips, I see you as well. Um, Elvira Lashley, yeah. Marcia Bestrode, um, Bishop Marlin Husbands. I uh, really want to thank God for all of you um, leaders who have been on. Yes, it was really a blessing having you. Thank you for being with us, Pastor Elsa Lafleur in Saint, in Antigua. Yeah, so I, I, I see so many nations present here this evening. You know, I really want to thank God for the time spent together. And we will continue to give God praise, Joel Abrams. In, in, in Maryland. God bless you. Chris Garns, Julie Eiffel, Janet Oliver. Love all of you. See you. See you. And good night. See you Sunday morning on the live stream. Right on this stream and also on the Restoration Ministries and the website and YouTube. Sunday morning, look out to see you. God bless you. Hallelujah.